Hello, welcome back. Welcome, welcome to another not Minecraft video. This is a math video. So, uh, this is the following graph of negative one to the power of x, um, in the real plane. <laughs> so, vertical axis is y. Uh, red, red axis is x. And when x is 0, it's 1, and so on and so forth. It sort of alternates between positive and negative, like a cosine or sine wave. And if you fill the spaces, um, never mind. If you visualize this in a complex axis, so the z-axis, and allow for complex numbers, imaginary numbers, i, um, it's going to look like this. Yep, it's like a cosine wave, except it's an exponential function. Um, so if I were to also rotate this, I mean, rotate the view of this like 90 degrees about the y-axis, it's going to look like this. The blue axis is um, the z-axis, or complex. Um, and yeah, the vertical is still y here. So rotate it 90 degrees, it looks like a donut. Um, here is it in 3D. Yep. So you're still hitting these points right here. Um, that's part, that are part of the real, real <laughs> axis. Okay. Um, but at say one half, um, x is going to be the square root of negative 1, which is i. So therefore, z is going to be 1. And it's going to, yeah, complete a little swirl here. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. OK, now I'm going to show you, let's see. I'm going to change this to. Uh, the base is going to be changed to negative 2. And it's pretty cool. I said that too much. Uh, let me just... It is loading. There we go. This is an exponential growth. So... Looks something like this. Wow. Uh, these are all the real-ish numbers. It's sort of wacky. The display is wacky, but these are all the real points. Um, and then this is, just looking at it from the side, this is facing the complex plane. Or Zx. Looking at it from the other way, basically. Uh, what does other way mean? So if I look at it from this way, there we go. Very, very cool. Um, I noticed something, but if you look at it from here, uh, does this does this pattern wind? Does it look like anything? I thought it looked like the Fibonacci sequence little pattern thing. It might be. I'm not sure. But it definitely looks like it. Yep. Exponential increase. Cool. Um, okay, I think I'm... Oh, wait, no. I want to show something first. Another thing. I'll explain how I did all of this later. I'm going to change the base value back to 1, but this time I'm going to check is plus minus. So what this means is basically a square root of i, for example, has two possible solutions. Uh, well, two possible answers. It's plus root 2 over 2 uh, plus uh, root 2 over 2 i, and also the negative version. Negative root 2 over 2 minus negative root 2 over 2 i. This is just visualizing both of them at the same time. Uh, so of course when uh, x 
is zero, there's only going to be one, one answer. But otherwise, when x is a non-integer fraction, uh, there's going to be multiple. <laughs> I don't know if this is correct. It's I don't think it's a function anymore. Wait, wait, wait. Anyways, this is what it looks like. You're you have two spirals going both ways, and it's pretty cool. It's like it's like a DNA double helix. We uh, yeah. This would be i, and this would be negative i at x. X is one half negative i and positive i. But it's kind of weird because complex numbers. The com the definition of negative and complex numbers is pretty complex. Um, it it's i to the three. It just rotated more basically. But see, ro rotation one way is the same thing as rotation the other way three times. Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I just said. Never mind. Okay, now I'm going to go into how I did this. So let me just change the screen to... Um, there we go. Okay. Remove that. So this is the code. Uh, equation handler. Um, so basically, I have this equation. There's this right here. Um, this is my answer. So it's the coefficient, which I didn't really use. It's one. Um, and then math.pow. So the base value, which is negative one to the power of x. Um, whenever this variable return is NAN, I forgot what that stands for. Anyways, uh, this means that it's invalid and it therefore it means it's going to be complex. We'll have a complex comp component to it. Um, so yes, um, so the way I do this, I need to first find the magnitude and then I'm going to rotate this by a certain amount. So because multiply multiplication by I is basically just rotation around the, another axis. Y yeah, yeah. Okay. So the absolute value of the coefficient times the absolute value of what it would have been if it was not negative. I mean, sorry, the absolute, I just turn it into positive to get how long the value is, the, the distance, so to speak. Yep. So th that's the magnitude or this distance from the x-axis yeah um i don't know if most of the things i'm saying are correct by the way so you should if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff you should learn more by yourself don't trust me um so i set the y value to the magnitude of the cosine of math.pi times x Hold on, what does this mean again right right so X is going to re represent rotation here because we're dealing with complex numbers. So let's say the base value is negative one or whatever, then multiplying it by the what, what X is going to be a power basically. And if it was a complex number, then this would be rotation because I don't know, say I, I squared would be negative one. Basically, uh, multiplying by i is rotation. So if you want to, to, I'm not going to explain this. But this is how the math works. Um, so basically, I, I, I do this. I, I'll actually explain it more later, or at least attempt to. And then I just instantiate a point based on the values. And that's how I, it's done. Um, here's a further, further explanation. Um, where is it? There it is. 
So this is a quick slide I made. Um, so yeah, multiplying by i is rotation. So the square root of i would actually just be like a pi over 4 rotation or a 45 degree rotation about rotation about what? Mm, I don't know. But this is basically like trigonometry. So y is going to be whatever the length of this line is times the cosine. So this, this length right here, the x distance can be represented by cosine, uh, which the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And same as same for sine. Um, yep. And the sine is going to be the imaginary part because this vertical, like, um, in this representation, i is going to be a complex plane. And the complex number line is going to be vertical. So sine, sine. So it's going to be sine and then multiplied by i to get the i component. Except uh, in my Unity program, I just replace i with the z-axis and yep that's pretty much it i'm not gonna explain these things but i thought it would be interesting to show uh so here's like a quick table of the values for this function or can i call it a function yeah 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 um wait, is this function continuous I feel like it's continuous under certain circumstances. It's continuous if you have, if you consider the imaginary x. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Anyways, uh, 0, 1, um, 1 half, it would be i because that's the square root of negative 1. And if it was negative 1 half, it would be negative i. Um, mm, I think that makes sense, yeah. And negative 1 is negative 1, and 1 is negative 1. Um, but if it was in between, it would be the square root of i. Um, because you're... What's this called? It's not the cubed root, it's the fourth... Is it the fourth root? Yes. So it would be plus or minus, because... The square root of i is also root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2 i, and uh, the negative version. It has two possible answers. I'm just going to choose one singular an answer. I, I think. Um, it's, I mean, the most important distinction to make here is that going in the opposite direction will give the answer of negative um, minus plus instead of plus minus. So it's whatever the opposite. Uh, I'm not sure if it's correct, but in my, I guess, in representing it, it works this way. Math is weird, but it's kind of fun too. I probably said at least one incorrect thing. Sorry. But but, but I hope you learned something. Mm, bye. Thanks for watching.